exactly those of 13 ABC. Now, Conklin and Company continues with Take 3, commentary and analysis from our panel of political contributors. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, take 3 now with our panel of political contributors. Uh, Michael Miller uh, is here. We'll hear from, yes, good sir. to see you again, yes, Michael, yes, from the Toledo Free Press. We're going to hear from another Miller in just a minute. Melissa Miller will, will uh, give us some input on, on the gay marriage uh, firestorm, uh, maybe. Uh, media, the media wise. Yeah, you know, uh, the president, as he said, evolving. <laughs> flip, let's, flop, let's just say flip, changing. Flop, flip, I mean, he, cha he changed it. He got kind of personal. He mentioned his daughters. And, sure. Uh, in talking to Robin Roberts uh, of ABC News in that interview this past week, and for the first time, a sitting president mm -hmm. says, I'm for, I'm for gay, gay, uh, gay marriage. So that opens it up. Mitt Romney responds. Uh, and there you go. So the impact, Michael Miller, in your estimation, here we are the Sunday following that announcement, is right. what? Well, it's, it's a little early to judge that in terms of long impact, but mm -hmm. the, the thing that you need to see up front is that gay marriage, domestic partner benefit rights, these are inevitabilities. These are as inevitable in the American life evolution as suffrage and civil rights were. It is going to be a part of our fabric. It's a slow, long process for change. Most of the world accepts and recognizes gay unions. America does not, no, by and no. large, 44 states currently ban what gay marriage is for a generic label of it. Um, so it, it isn't like the president came out with the majority of, of states no, on his side. No. But at the same time, he, he, he so carefully couched what he said. He Basically what he came out and said was, I personally believe that, that, that gay people should, should be able to marry, but they don't necessarily but have the right to marry. It's a state, state issue, right. which is kind of like saying, back. which is like saying, well, you know, public schools should be racially integrated, but if Alabama disagrees, mm -hmm. they should be able to change mm -hmm. that. So it really didn't has, has no impact at all on, on the day-to-day -day reality of it. I think the gay community saw it as a major victory because it hasn't happened before, right. and it does enter right. into the conversation. Conversation being one of the key elements because this is an election about the economy. It's going to be a fight about the economy, and if they can change that conversation to social issues, they can talk about the dog or the contraception. Mm -hmm. They're going to try right. everything they can to keep them talking about the numbers because the numbers are what are on most people's minds, and that's what's hurting most of us. You know, I talked to uh, Melissa Miller, political science professor at uh, Bowling Green State University, a contributor on this program, mm -hmm. uh, after the president uh, did that interview with Robin Roberts and asked her about the impact here in Ohio long-term in November. Here's what she had to say. I don't think this will decide the election in Ohio or any other state. I think the election still will be decided on the one key issue that Americans unanimously think is the most important right now, and that's the economy. And so the more things change, the more they <laughs> do stay the same. Right. But in the swing states where things are very close, Ohio, Virginia, North Carolina, Colorado, some of these states, these issues could have just enough of an impact to make some of these 44, you know, 43 races Especially go in a close. state like North Carolina. Sure. Where they that, had that their is say just this week. flatly rejected Absolutely. the idea where that really could cost him. Right. And, and one of the things I think that, I don't want to term this as a mistake, but one of the things I thought was odd for the president this week was he comes out and talks about this issue in terms of, he mentioned the golden rule. He mentioned the teachings of Jesus. It was a very kind of religious, moral thing for him. He's the president. Talk constitutionally. Talk about how it should play out federally in terms of states' rights. Talk about, you know, we're guaranteed life, liberty, and the pursuit mm -hmm. of happiness. And if a man loves a woman or a woman loves a woman, and that's their definition of pursuit of happiness, that's where he had, I think, an advantage to couch the conversation and move this forward. But calling, kind of falling back on the golden rule moral stuff, it just kind of added the wishy-washy mm -hmm. factor for me. And uh, we talked a little bit before the show about how these this national and local issues have converged. Yeah, Mayor Bell just introduced yes. the domestic partner benefits right. Then this comes up. Then this week, Stephen Steele goes to the council and introduces the proposal for Joe, Joe Wicks, Wicks' way. way. Right. Uh, Joe Wicks was the owner of Caesars, a, a, a gay bar, one right. of the first in, in, in this mm -hmm. region in the Midwest, and, and a, a gay icon for the community. But uh, when this was brought Splitting up, council, right? Well, well, kind of, sort of split council. I think Stephen Steele may have gone out there with just enough research to believe that that, that Mr. Wicks had the appropriate standing, but not enough feedback from the business community mm. to know what he was in for. Uh, uh, Councilman Serrantu shared with us more than 24 emails he got this week, mm. vehemently opposing this from from yeah. neighbors down there who talked about taxes not being paid, the conditions of the property. Right, right. Chris Zervo says that building may be unusable. Yeah, we, we talked with business owners as well uh, that were not happy that this not was at all. being thrown around. And, yeah. and so now they're in a position where 
you know, uh, Councilman uh, Winooski and Councilman McNamara talked about, well, we need to come up with a process for this. Well, there are some intersections downtown already named. You know, Monsignor has, has, there's a couple of those down there. So now they're in a position of having to say, well, for this one person, right. now where, we have to come up with a process. Where do you draw the line? Exactly. What is the process? Exactly. Right. And right. this is going to be something that they, they, they delayed the vote for two weeks, which will give them more time to collect feedback. But I think this is a test for this. The downtown business community who has their money on the table, they said, no, hmm. we don't want this. We don't like this. Council does it anyway. Is that saying council doesn't right. care about the business community? Or is it saying that the business community doesn't have the juice to stop something like mm. this. So this has become from a simple resolution to honor somebody to a much bigger thing. And Lair Scott, who's an activist from Chicago, has threatened to have a national protest march on the steps of one government mm. center June 1st if there isn't some action taken. And Lair Scott is a very divisive person, but he's also the gentleman who got the, the Bert and Ernie thing from last mm. August with you know 17 or 18,000 people involved. Well, and you mentioned social issues on a national front. Mm -hmm. It's about the, but it's about the economy. Here, this is in Toledo. Isn't it about the economy? And <laughs> now we're the biggest controversy is about whether to name an intersection after Joe Wicks. Well, it's, there it's, are the it's, one, it's, it's one part of a one. larger. It, right. it is, and these things sometimes are media driven and media pushed. Yeah. But I think it does symbolize some of the larger conversation taking place. And no matter what we're talking about, there's always money behind yeah. it. There's always some impact on the economy laying in there somewhere. All right, it's the, the media call on the media. Out. Is that what Michael Mueller's doing? Yeah, now? Yeah. <laughs> I've done that once or twice. <laughs> once or twice. Not you, yeah. you know. Oh, have, you. have at it. <laughs> Let's take a look at some polls. Uh, first of all, presidential race here in Ohio, Quinnipiac University poll. Look at look at uh, within the margin of error. And this is Michael uh, and viewers. If Rob Portman were on the ticket, okay. Okay? okay. So there's a caveat there. Next page, if we can. Uh, and and this is it here. And, and the last one is bas basically a. Uh, a virtual dead heat yes. here. See where that goes. But I want to, real quickly, we're going to run out of time. The Senate race, uh, Josh Mandel is closing the gap a bit. It was a 10 point lead for Sherrod Brown. Both are spending a ton of money yes. attacking one another. And with about 30 seconds here, Michael, your, co your comments, your well, thoughts on this, this race. This week, the Wall Street Journal labeled this as one of the races to watch as a bellwether for the whole enchilada come November. They're within a million dollars of each other for fundraising. Uh, the Mandel camp has a poll that shows they're actually tied. I don't think anyone thought Mendel would be this no. close this soon. He is. He isn't just one to watch this fall. I believe it, uh, there's a national ticket in his future, and it, and it starts wow. in November. Well, I don't, I don't think too many people gave him a chance to beat uh, Richard Cordray. That's right. A couple and of years he, ago. He, right? Yes, sir. Upset special. <laughs> Make it a great Sunday, everybody. Uh, and uh, happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. Take care.